Hey guys, it's Felix. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the FPGA and just a little bit about how its internal structure works and why we're going to be using Verilog. And then we're going to jump into some of the basics for how Verilog functions in terms of the FPGA hardware. First of all, FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And essentially, it is this big mesh of configurable logic blocks. This is where all of the logic that you program happens. And they're all linked to each other through these rows and columns in this grid. And then you have your input-output input output I.O. ports on the outside that are hooked up to these rows and columns. So any of these I.O. pins can be configured to hook up to these different configurable logic blocks and then the logic blocks can hook up one from here and the output can go into this one and it can process things and go into that one and then finally go out into an output pin. So the general flow would be we have some inputs here and they head into a logic block and it does something and then that logic block feeds into another logic block and does something and that feeds into another one and that might be our final result so then that comes out through the the grid system out to some other pins that we can specify as outputs so how do we get the FPGA hardware configured how we want we use something called HDL or hardware description language that allows us to write some code and then the people who work with FPGAs have written some software that translates the HDL into a synthesis of what logic elements are going to be needed inside these logic blocks and then it has to map all of the logic to the specific make of chip or the specific model because every chip is a little bit different and then it has to figure out timing and simulation stuff and finally it can actually send the bitstream into the FPGA to physically cause the hardware to reconfigure itself. So it's quite a long process and we can really appreciate the hard work that all these engineers have done for us to make this possible. But now we have all of these thousands of logic cells at our fingertips with just writing a few lines of code which is pretty cool. We're going to be using an HDL called Verilog. The reason for that, we there are many HDLs out there already, but the main two that are used in the enterprise world right now are Verilog and VHDL. We're going to use Verilog because it's slightly less verbose than VHDL, meaning you don't have to type quite as much code for it to work and I think it it ends up looking a, a little bit simpler and the reason we're not using another HDL such as the one that your mojo comes with called lucid when you open this guy up you will get the option to program in lucid but ultimately lucid compiles into Verilog and there are so many HDLs out there right now that are all under development that it's really not possible to say which one is going to arise as the standard. So for now, let's just stick with one that already is a standard. And once you learn how to program an FPGA, 
the language that you use isn't going to be terribly hard to learn. They're all essentially doing the same thing. So we're just going to pick one and say Verilog is good enough. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can actually implement the code and start using some of these logic devices inside the FPGA. But if you have any other questions about how the FPGA itself works, feel free to leave a comment and we'll get back to you. See you next time.